The snow was really coming down now. This meeting could have been timed better. Lyra had known that the Pegasi were planning another snowfall today, but she hadn't been counting on the wind as well. She was freezing even with the pants, sweater, scarf, and the heavy coat over top of it all. She glanced up to see the library just ahead. With a final burst of speed, she hurried to the door and dashed inside. Recovering from the wind and cold, she kicked the snow off her hooves and shook off her parka. A coat rack was right next to the door, so she pulled it off and hung it up. Oh, Lyra, you're here. Make yourself at home. Spike's got a fire going in the other room. Lyra's eyes narrowed. Twilight's being way too friendly. Or is she just always like this? Thanks. So, how's your roommate been? I haven't talked to Bon Bon in a while. She's been okay for the most part, but when I said I was headed over here to help you with your report, she said she wanted to find something heavy to hit her head against. Oh, well, you can go ahead and get started. I'll be in there in a minute. Lyra turned and headed for the other room. Twilight really did own a lot of books. This room, like the other, was mostly shelves upon shelves of them. A ladder leaned up against one wall. On the opposite side of the room, Spike was sitting by the fireplace, holding his right claw and grimacing. He glanced up at Lyra as she walked in. Oh, hey, Spike! You okay? Yeah. Twilight's been having me write these notes for her all day. I've got a serious claw cramp! Oh, I know how that is. Those are a real pain. Huh? Oh, from what I've heard. So, anyways, what have you been writing? Anything for the princess? Care to tell me anything? Just some to-do lists and some rough drafts for Twilight's report. You wouldn't believe how much preparation she always does for these. You sure you haven't been writing to the princess? What about Twilight? Has she told you anything? The door opened and Twilight entered the room. Owlicious flew in behind her and perched on the top rung of the ladder. A couple books floated in the air around her head. They drifted over to the table and settled down. Hey there, you two. You've been working pretty hard today, Spike. I think Lyra and I can handle it from here. Finally! Ah. Good night! Let's get started, Lyra. Yeah, I guess we should. Lyra, you're not still suspicious of me, are you? Because I'm telling you the truth. Princess Celestia has never told me anything about humans. Other than this assignment, of course. Of course not! What was Twilight doing? How lousy of a spy could she be if she was going to blatantly deny it like that? She had even been the one to bring it up in the first place. Lyra obviously hadn't been planning on saying anything about that to her. Twilight crossed the room and searched through the drawer, taking out scrolls and loose sheets of paper. It's in here somewhere. Aha! Right here. You can look at this yourself. The letter floated over until it was right in front of Lyra's face. She unrolled it and read the fancy script. My faithful student, Twilight Sparkle, in the interest of understanding early equestrian culture, I would like you to compile a complete report on the various legends concerning creatures known as humans. As usual, keep me informed on your progress and any questions you may have. Your mentor, Princess Celestia. Lyra took note of the official seal at the bottom of the parchment. It didn't appear to be fresh. So... When'd you get this? Over a month ago. That's all the information she gave me. It's taken me a long time to get started. There's just nothing about humans anywhere. She calls them legends. Of course, there is nothing else they could be. I'll admit that the entire world that humans were said to live in is extremely detailed, and I'm especially fascinated in how there are so many different kingdoms and rulers in these stories. Not only that, but the same historical events keep getting mentioned. It's very consistent. Because they're not legends! Because, through generations of storytelling, imaginary places like France got to be universally accepted. I didn't even realize that when Rarity talks about French couture, it's actually an allusion to ancient pony mythology. She's probably not aware of that herself. You honestly think it's made up? Or did Princess Celestia tell you to say that? Of course she did. Well, no, that's not what she told me to say. It's just what it is. That's all the background I got from her. Lyra, you've been reading these for longer than I have. All we know about humans comes from books. There's no scientific or archaeological basis to prove that there's any truth to these stories. 
What about their tools? We still use those and clothing. You even admitted that rarity styles are based off human design. There are made up creatures who are always shown using the same objects ponies do because ponies created them and those objects. Those stories might even be part of some kind of creation myth. Historically, lots of the mythical creatures have some kind of relevance to the society that imagined them. That's the only reason I can imagine that Princess Celestia would want me to know about them. Cultural relevance. Lyra gaped at her, but she couldn't think of any response. She was not about to admit to Princess Celestia's own student that she had heard it from Luna herself that humans were real. Maybe Twilight isn't lying. She really does seem to know nothing. But I still have to speak carefully. Anything I say could potentially be reported back to the castle, and that would be a problem. Fine, just let me see what you've been able to find. She walked over to the desk and checked out the books that Twilight had set there. Pre-Equestrian Mysteries, The Human Hypothesis, and The Age of Man. The titles were faded and nearly unreadable, and the books seemed to be falling apart. But these were all new sources, books that weren't in Lyra's own collection from Canterlot. Lyra had never considered what other cities' libraries might have. It's probably best if we just dive right in. I've gotten these from the Manhattan Library. It took them weeks to just respond to my letter. They said they had to check their oldest section before they found anything. Remembering her own trip to the Canterlot Archives all those years ago, Lyra nodded. That usually seems to be the case. I've checked pre-equestrian mysteries, and all it had were a few paragraphs mentioning humans. I don't think it had anything other than what you already know. By the way, you said you'd check to see what you had. Did you bring them? It took me a while to find this. There was only one left, so I brought what I had. Designs for Dexterity was the smallest of her books, just barely a hundred pages. The other books, the ones that went into more detail, were all at home, hidden. She had to withhold as much information as she could from Twilight, just as she'd always done with her parents, really. All this particular book mentioned were human inventions. The introduction even stated that these were meant to be theories. But the pony who had written the book most likely believed in them. With this evidence, how could anyone not? Well, alright then. You're sure this is all you had? I thought you said you had more. Nope. My parents wanted me to get rid of them. When I was here a few months ago, that was nothing. Just curiosity. I haven't been studying humans for years. That was the story Lyra would stick to. The same one she'd told her parents. Her interest in humans had been a childhood phase and she'd grown out of it. Of course, Twilight knew that she'd been researching the structure of hands just a few months ago, but there was no way she'd hear about the results. Twilight frowned. She opened her mouth, then shook her head and decided not to say anything. Glancing over the book spread out on the table, she chose The Age of Man and opened it up. This one is actually from Trottingham. It's the only one that I could find. I guess man is short for human. Have you ever heard of that before? That's basic knowledge, Twilight. So what's that one about? It's what I was talking about earlier. The different nations of humans and how they interacted with one another. Political structures, languages. I can't believe they took the time to create entire languages for fictional cultures. What is it going to take to convince you that humans aren't fictional? Lyra, you can't believe everything you read. You have to use your judgment. Maybe you should be using yours. What about the play you were in? I found a lot of things wrong with it. Are you really sure that's how Equestria was founded? <laughs> of course it happened. That story's been a part of Equestrian's culture for thousands of years. Sure, maybe some of the details aren't historically accurate, but it's a dramatization and- Wendigos! Huh? What about them? What happened to those? Supposedly their spirits are something that create blizzards as a result of disharmony, but what happened to them? That certainly never happened as long as I've been around. You believe in humans, but you don't believe in that? You can ask any foal in Equestria. Every pony knows about Wendigos, but no pony's ever heard of humans. That's not the point. They disappeared because our society learned the value of harmony and- How do you know that? Well, it's just what the play implies. Exactly. Just another plot hole. I said it was a dramatization. Then where's the proof that any of it is true? It was only then that Lyra realized all of what she had said. She wanted to smack herself. How could she have been so stupid? Well, 
that's just a theory of mine. <laughs> I haven't really given it any serious consideration at all. Let's just get started on this. She picked up the book Lyra had brought in, and Lyra started with the first chapter of The Age of Man. It was like being a filly again. All these new books about humans, new things that Lyra had never seen before. The political systems of humans were described in more detail here than she'd seen before. Most of them were monarchies, similar to what Equestria had. But human kings and queens didn't have any magic power. They were so much closer to the common people that way and they wouldn't live forever. The power would pass through each generation of sons or daughters, so it was in constant shift. Then, there it was. The lyre was an ancient Greek instrument played, of course, by humans. There was a picture of a human seated and plucking the strings of a lyre, just like the one she herself used. It looked so much like that drawing Lyra had done, based on what she'd seen in her dream. She read the caption about how the music would usually accompany a recitation of an epic story. Where are those? Surely written copies must exist. Obviously lyres had more significance to human culture than Lyra had previously realized. Now she needed to find out what these stories were that went with them. She loved the stories about humans. Legend, sure, but that only proved they themselves were real. There was no reason for a legendary creature to have its own mythology. I've got it! What do you mean? I get what the significance of humans is. They're all the same. Of course, I should have seen this earlier. What do you mean by all the same? Ponies are all different. Humans can't fly, and the books never mention them doing magic. The whole point is that they have the same abilities. That's what I was saying when I said that they had significance to ancient cultures. By having this imaginary civilization that's all the same, ponies would learn to appreciate and understand how different they were. <laughs> <sighs> Twilight, you haven't found anything about Greek myths, have you? Or any songs? I think everything about the, um, Greeks, was it? I think it was all in that book. Nope, this one's all factual. I'm looking for... Uh, <laughs> never mind. They continued for another half hour or so. There was a real gold mine of information here. Lyra tried to think if there were any other cities in Equestria that were known for having good libraries. It was always possible that she could find out more about the lyre there. The idea that she'd been using a human instrument gave her such a connection to them, and she loved that. Not to mention she'd even learned how to play the lyre in the human style, with hands. Magic could never compare to the physical feeling of the strings against her fingers. She skimmed over the paragraphs about Greece a few more times. It was frustrating, none of this was information she could really use. Twilight was completely absorbed in the book Lyra had brought. This was her chance. She stepped over the wall of bookshelves, scanning the titles. If the answers about humans weren't in these books, maybe the clues were somewhere else, hidden in plain sight, right in the pony's own history. Here was one. Pegasi, from past to present. Lyra pulled it from the shelf and flipped it open. She started at the front, where the earliest Pegasus leaders were described. Her eyes rapidly scanned the pages for anything about a Commander Hurricane or Private Pansy. Nothing in the first chapter. Turning to the index, she searched for the names. Nothing. Pretty odd, isn't it? You'd think the Pegasus who originally founded Equestria would at least get a mention. Lyra, did you find something else? I didn't think I had any other books on humans. Oh, no, it's... You were reading about Pegasi? It's for another project. I had no idea you had such diverse interests, Lyra. You could be an excellent historian if you wanted. If you ever need to borrow one of these, you're welcome to it. She passed the book over to Lyra. The magic aura around it changed from purple to green, and Lyra stashed it away in her saddlebag. She didn't have any actual intention of reading further. She'd found what she needed. Or, more accurately, hadn't found it. Oh, I'll do that! Thanks! <laughs> Lyra, I know you think humans must have been real, but... There's really nothing to suggest that they ever existed. The theory would be more plausible if you had solid evidence, but... What about Nightmare Moon? Huh? No, you're changing the subject, I'm... I'm not changing the subject! You talked about Nightmare Moon when you came to Ponyville and none of us believed you! How is that any different? It's completely different! There were references to her in all sorts of stories! We had a celebration dedicated to her and an exact date that she was said to return, and she did! All you've got that mentioned humans are... Stories. From 
Princess Celestia probably told you that Nightmare Moon was a story too, didn't she? Face it, Twilight, we're not all that different. Someday, I'll find the truth. Returning to her reading, Twilight didn't say any more on the subject. Lyra just couldn't understand how anybody who'd read the books could still be so skeptical. It was even worse than her parents. They didn't believe in humans, but they wouldn't even touch the books. Dewey Decimal had found his daughter in her bedroom. It was dark out, almost midnight, but she was still poring over one of those books by candlelight. The past few days, this was all she had wanted to do. Even the history report that she'd nearly failed hadn't done much to discourage her, if anything it just made things worse. Heartstrings, I've been talking to your mother and we agreed that you really shouldn't be reading all of those books. What my teacher said was wrong! I just know it! He had just known this wouldn't be easy. Please, you've been spending every waking moment on this, and it's just not good for you. Your mother's been very upset. Why? What does mom have against humans? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We're just worried that you're neglecting your other schoolwork. Have you been working on your magic? Lyra's horn glowed as she closed the book and set it over on the corner of the table with the others. I can do magic just fine now! It's easy! I know you'll be an excellent unicorn someday. All we want is for you to reach that potential. But by tomorrow, we want these books out of this house! That, that's not fair! <sighs> I'm sorry. Now it's getting late, you should probably go to bed. There's still school tomorrow. He left, and Lyra glumly turned back to her books. There was no way she would get rid of these. Of course she wouldn't. She lifted them up off the table and set them down next to the bed, and then lifted up the mattress. One at a time, she slid them in between the mattress and the bed frame. Hopefully her parents wouldn't find them here. If necessary, she'd come up with another hiding place and move them. Whatever it took, she wasn't giving up on humans. Sure, all she had were books, but lately she'd started having dreams too. It was best to stay rational. If she was constantly reading about humans and thinking about humans during the day, it only made sense that she'd dream about them during the night. But it all seemed so real, the parts she remembered anyway. She climbed into bed and pulled the covers over herself. Her eyelids felt heavy, she was asleep in a matter of seconds. Most of her dreams were very hazy, and often Lyra would wake up with just a fleeting image in her mind that she'd completely lose within a few hours. But tonight it was mostly sound, just a single word in a voice that she was half sure she hadn't heard before, but obviously speaking to her. Lyra? Lyra? She stared at the drawing of a human in the book she was reading. It was a female in a long, elegant dress in a tiara. Human royalty from some long-forgotten nation. This outfit reminded her of rarities from the play. Lyra? Uh, yeah? Just suppose for a minute. Just suppose that humans were actually real, and you had proof of it. What would you do? Um... Not sure. You seem so fixated on finding proof that they existed. But either way, it's obvious that there aren't any of them around now. If there even were. I'm also trying to understand why Princess Celestia wouldn't want any ponies to know about them. According to your theory, there's nothing here that seems objectionable. There was certainly something Luna didn't like about them. I'd consider that proof. But all that aside, what exactly had drawn me to humans in the first place? It's something that's hard to put into words. I guess that's what I'd like to know too. There's just so little information on humans, but I just know that there's more to them that we don't understand. And if there was any chance that they weren't gone somehow. At night, when Lyra would suddenly find herself in a human world, one that felt so real but didn't always line up with what the book said. It really felt like humans might not be so far away. Maybe it was time to put aside the books and test out some more of her theories. <laughs>